WBA champion Michael Spinks, the WBC champion Dwight Braxton. Ray Letter, no question about it. This is a classic confrontation of styles. You got the big man, sort of a straight up guy, and he is big for this division, over six feet two, and a guy who's gonna come straight at him, Dwight Braxton, who says he's a boxer, but he likes to box close. Can Michael Spinks handle the style of Dwight Braxton? Michael Spinks has all the physical qualifications to deal with a guy like Dwight Braxton, because Braxton's gonna bring the fight to Michael. Michael's keep him outside with the left jab, not let him get close to him so he can smother his punches. It's gonna be a good fight. I'm looking for an early knockout. These guys use eight ounce gloves, which is, I think, very unusual for me. You said unequivocally this fight will not go 15 rounds. I'll quote you on that one right now. You know, one of the biggest questions asked is who is Michael Spinks? Well, he's a guy who admittedly says he doesn't much like to fight. He doesn't like the idea of hurting someone. That'll give you an idea. Hello, students. Hello. I think I have a little story for you all about myself, my childhood. Not from the beginning, but say from the time I was in school. Michael Spinks grew up with seven brothers and sisters on the near south side of St. Louis, Missouri. The ghetto is an arena for a neighborhood gang, a living nightmare for a young man trying to survive, and for some, a forum for thought. I always daydream. I lay in the grass and I'd be looking at the sky, and I would just um, wonder. My mind would wonder, and I would wonder about me controlling my hand. And, you know, um, feeling my heartbeat. I was really very curious about life, I guess. I dedicated myself every day to training and getting myself really physically prepared, trying to make the Olympic team. And the Olympics is the biggest amateur event in the world. Michael Spinks went to the Olympic Games in Montreal in 1976 and decisioned the Russian Rufat Riskiev to win the gold medal in the middleweight division. It was his proudest moment. My life had changed when I won the Olympics. And my life as a pro was my life as a pro. And I didn't know what to expect out as a pro. Michael's professional future was clouded by the unfortunate troubles of his brother Leon, who went from Olympic gold medalist to world heavyweight champion by beating the legendary Muhammad Ali. We ran a tight ship to get Leon the title, and Leon accomplished the mission. And uh, immediately after that, it was, it was uh, the beginning of an end. After Leon won the title, there was just so many people on Leon. And I, Michael saw this, and I think that he wants the best for his brother, and he felt as though that the people that was, you know, trying to, like, get to Leon was the wrong people. I was trying to say to him, Leon, let's get together. I mean, you, you Leon, you, you, you're out there by yourself now. You need a friend, you know, and you don't have a... There's no one you can find to be a better friend to you than your brother. Okay, before long, Leon and myself, we were destined to become the first two brothers to ever win a world title. One day in 1980, Michael woke up and found his own identity. He rededicated his life to boxing. While sleeping during a training camp period, he would awaken in the midst of throwing a combination. And suddenly, he was a light heavyweight on his own mission. Michael had developed the most fearsome right hand in boxing. And finally, he had become a world champion. This is what I won. I won this when I fought for the world title. But the glare of the spotlight does not always bode well. On January 5th, Michael Spinks was arrested on a gun violation charge after a revolver was found in his car. And then, just 48 hours later, Sandra Massey, Michael's common-law wife and the mother of their daughter, Michelle, was tragically killed in a car accident. Michael was devastated. That was my other half. She covered me when I couldn't cover myself. And likewise, I covered her when she couldn't cover herself. So it's tough, you know, I guess in time, as time, as time passes, you know, I guess I'm, I'm dealing with it. But every, each and every time I think of my, my daughter and how she's doing, um, I, I get feelings of emptiness. You've got to bite the bullet, because always remember one thing, Michael, 
Yesterday you can do nothing about. From this day on, this is the first day of the rest of your life. She is in the flesh gone, you know. But in spirit, she still lives within, lives within me. I'll stay in school. I'll stay in school. I'll listen to every last one of my teachers. And I'll do the very, 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 very best that I can to be the best, the very best student I can. All right. Thank you. <laughs> An interesting look at an interesting guy. There was a very emotional scene, incidentally, just a few moments ago in Michael Spink's locker as his daughter was brought to him. There were a lot of tears all around the locker room. How it affects him tonight remains to be seen. We've talked about the fact that it's a very special evening for very many reasons, with a few of those reasons.